Hi, my name is Tracy Wheeler, and I'm here to introduce you to the funding landscape. Currently, I'm with the Craig H. Nielsen Foundation, which is a private nonprofit organization that funds spinal cord injury research and programs. Prior to the foundation, I worked at Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency as a consultant. This is a government funding organization inside the DOD. Throughout my career, I've worked with many other private and public funding sources. And one thing became very clear. Each funding source has specific goals and your chances of leveraging these resources will be very low if you don't understand those goals. It takes a lot of time, money, and experimental success to translate neurotechnology into a clinically viable treatment. Many promising approaches fail to navigate the so-called valley of death, leaving all that's been invested on the shelf collecting dust. Don't let this happen to you. You must continually update your development strategy. In other words, don't expect to get very far, very fast, if you're repeating the same strategy you used at the start, no matter how successful it was. Same thing applies for funding. You cannot continually apply for the same NIH grants over and over again and expect to translate your technology. So let's get started. In the broadest sense, funding comes from two sources, you or somebody else. You might be you willing to like use savings or take on personal debt, credit cards, personal loans, maybe even business loans to fund your development. Today, we're going to talk about funding that comes from somebody else. In this case, you need to ask, what's in it for them? Why is this money available? Funding from others will be either non-dilutive or dilutive. Your funding source is considered dilutive if you have to give up some equity or percent ownership in your creation. Non-dilutive funding is generally directed towards early stage development. As technology advances and becomes more and more closer to commercialization, the funding available for it becomes more dilutive. There are many different funding sources for neurotechnology that you may be less familiar with. For example, NGOs, non-governmental organizations, private and public foundations are examples. They may be an option for you for preclinical research, first in human trials, and even some clinical trials. So let's take a closer look at all of these funding sources. Now, because of the JOBS Act, this is legislation that passed in 2016, you may be able to receive dilutive funding from non-accredited sources, such as crowdfunding. This kind of disrupts my nice categorization on the slides um, because crowdfunding may offer other things in lieu of equity, like first chances to buy or other incentives. There are certain rules and regulations that you must follow in the JOBS Act, but this type of funding almost guarantees all startups have a shot at wooing investors. Non-dilutive funding is probably what you're most familiar with. Most neurotechnology develops in laboratories through funded research grants. You're probably less familiar with the other sources, such as competitions. Tech Crunch Disrupt is a very popular annual competition for early startups. And also, don't forget about gifts. Why get another ugly sweater 
when you can ask your friends and family to direct their contributions towards your neurotechnology. As we mentioned before, crowdfunding is also an option, as long as you follow the rules. And loans are also a strategy that allows you to retain all your equity. But of course, you'll need to pay these back. Although most forms of non-dilutive funding don't require repayment or equity, they often have very lengthy applications and can be quite competitive. Dilutive and non-dilutive funding is distributed along these three stages. There is overlap. However, it's important that you align the type of funding you seek with the stage of development. So first, let's go into pre-seed. This funding is designed to help you develop the technology, see if it works, determine if it's safe, as well as effective. Next comes seed funding. This is where you start building your organization. Incubators are a great option for early stage business development. Most incubators are nonprofit and non-dilutive, but a few do expect some equity or payment in return for helping you establish your startup. They can provide workspace, training, and access to investors. Finally, there's series funding. This is usually provided by VC or private equity groups. Series A funding requires that you have a proven market demand and a strong business model. It's actually the first large investment that you'll have to help establish your technology. Series B funding is designed to help you continue to build your organization and expand to meet the market demands. Series C is often not even necessary. It's there to really help an organization become self-sustainable, but many organizations will either do this on their own or they'll meet failure. Now that you have a good understanding of the funding landscape, let's review a few key points. Understanding the intent of the funding is of the utmost importance. If you understand the motivation, you will have insight into what stage of development is expected and be able to assess the real costs. Dilutive funding is not necessarily a bad thing. Although you give up equity, you gain the support of people invested in your success. And if you're really lucky, you'll also gain awesome mentoring, connections, insight, and potentially other support. If you are wildly successful in your research and able to demonstrate both the safety and efficacy of your technology, you should stop looking for research and development funding and explore those that are targeted towards commercialization. The rest of this presentation will focus on early or pre-seed funding. Most of this funding comes from these three sources. The federal government, individual states, and then foundations and other NGOs. Federal funding will be discussed in another section, so I'm only going to cover two points. The first point I want to make about federal funding is most neurotechnology development is funded through organizations that you see on this slide. They all have competitive grant programs and you can visit their websites and apply. They, the second point is that they also may provide links to other funding organizations. 
And so, for example, if you remember from the introduction, I'm with the Craig H. Nielsen Foundation, an NGO that specializes in programs and research in spinal cord injury. So I put myself in the shoes of my grantees, in this case, an SCI researcher developing neurotechnology. I logged on to a federal website. It was the Small Business Administration, SBA.gov. From there, I was able to link to resources in every state. Because I reside in Virginia, I went to their Small Business Development Center, and it provided me all kinds of other links to resources in Virginia. And most importantly, the Center for Innovative Technology provides research and commercialization funds that site linked me to the Commonwealth Neurotrauma Initiative Trust Fund. This is a trust fund that was set up for Virginia-based organizations. Any institution or researcher can apply to it to help address the needs of people with TBI and SCI. So the reason why I give you this story is that I found an SCI specific grant opportunity starting from a federal website. Now, there's many other funding resources available, so let's start looking closer at NGOs. NGOs that make grants for technology development are usually public or private foundations or charities. Both of them serve the public good, but who they fund and how much they fund varies widely. Private foundations that make grants usually make them to other NGOs or nonprofits. They have stricter IRS restrictions and disclosure rules. Public charities, on the other hand, make grants to individuals, organizations, and they may even provide direct services. Private foundations don't usually rely on solicited funds. The money that they distribute comes from gifts that they have received, usually from a person, a family, or a company. Public charities solicit support in order to do their grant making. They may get support from the general public. They may also get grants from other um, nonprofits and government organizations. Because all of the information on NGOs is in the public domain, you can easily determine what type of organization it is, who they make their grants to, and how much is distributed on an annual basis. My favorite slide, foundations. <laughs> it is to your advantage to learn about non-federal opportunities and understand the different types of foundations. R&D support is what most foundations do, and there are a lot of them out there. The foundations on this slide are the major funders of spinal cord injury research and programs. Now, remember the most important question to ask when seeking funding from someone else is, what's in it for them? Why is the money available? Most foundations are disease-centric, disease or disorder-centric. The primary condition of your neurotechnology is of the utmost importance to them. They don't want to fund technology development for technology's sake. They want to improve the lives of the people that they serve. Foundations can offer lots to you. They can offer insights into the people that they serve and that your research is supposed to help. They can advocate for research. They may help recruit for trials. They may provide support or registries. They may also give you opportunities to meet people with the disorders of interest or other researchers in that field that may be valuable collaborators. How do you interact with the foundation? First thing, determine if it's a good fit. 
read their mission statement so you can understand what their goals are and what their funding strategy is. Don't waste their time or yours. If it isn't a good fit, look elsewhere. When you do interact with them, don't overwhelm them with details or tell them what they already know. Remember, they are plugged into the community and so they're probably pretty familiar with the major concerns. If it is a good fit, build the relationship. You'll find that interactions with foundation staff may be even more important than with federal or state. Do your homework too. Learn what you can from their website. They may have investment priorities. They may tell you how their support is different from other sources and identify the appropriate program staff to reach out to. Then introduce yourself by email and ask for a call. You can send an abstract or maybe specific aims and ask them for feedback on it to see if it's a good fit with the foundation's research and priority or other interests. The foundation may share more information with you during that call on their funding strategy and review process so you can better prepare for a competitive application. Consumer involvement is also usually very important to foundations. So you may use this time to find out if they have any guidance or recommendations for research. There is no one stop shop for a complete listing of all the foundations that have grant opportunities. So you're going to need to do a little investigation. First, you should ask your mentors, colleagues, other contacts, if they know about any foundations that would be relevant. Then look at the acknowledgement section of every relevant paper or talk that you've attended. This is one of the most important and least utilized strategies for finding alternate funding opportunities. Foundation staff also attend major national meetings and conferences, so look for them there. They may have a booth that you can visit. Your grants and contracts office may also be able to provide introductions. But always be sure to sign up for the newsletters and listservs of the funding organizations that you know of. Many of these listservs will announce other funding sources that are relevant when they become available. And then that will also be sure that you're being notified when new funding does become available for the source that you already know about. And then finally, um, Google it, right? Foundations and whatever disease or disorder of interest you believe your neuro neurotechnology will target. In summary, don't fear the valley of death. There is always an oasis, but never lose focus on the intent of the funding. Funding is never offered to help you out specifically, but instead to help advance a cause or solve a problem. Make sure that you build relationships with NGOs and plug into their community. By increasing community contact and learning more about the consumer perspective, it's only going to help you translate your technology. I really hope that you've enjoyed this presentation and good luck translating your neurotechnology.